Okay. So, in the previous class we were discussing this uh, joint uh, moments rather this uh, moment generating function right. We start from there again there will be little overlap, but there is nothing wrong if there is little overlap with uh, the last phase of uh, previous days lecture. So, we are given uh, two random variables as before x y jointly random then we define this function phi maybe we can put a phi prime I will tell you why I am putting a phi prime s 1 s 2 as the expected value of u to the power s 1 x plus s 2 y. Now, listen <coughs> earlier we had a situation where s 1 was equal to j omega 1, s 2 was j omega 2 and the entire thing was called the joint characteristic function. It was written as phi of omega 1 omega 2. Since j omega 1 is replaced by s 1 here and j omega 2 is replaced by s 2 okay, and j is missing on this side, okay, I am giving it a new name phi prime. Okay, there is only difference. This is called the moment generating function. We have already seen what is the moment, joint moment that is x to the power r, y to the power k, its expected value of this product is called the joint moment of order k plus r equal to say n. Right. Now, this function will help us in uh, getting those moments of various orders. Okay. To understand that, let us first do this. This is an exponential, right? So, s 1 x plus s 2 y, you can even call it z, so to the power z, you expand u to the power z into a power series. We all know what that power series is, there will be a summation of terms, an infinite summation actually, and the expectation is a linear operator. You can apply expectation on each of the terms in the summation separately, right? If you do that, that is, first you have expected value. n equal to 0 to infinity get to the power n factorial n this is the exponential series okay. and then I will apply this expectation operator on each term in this summation factorial n is a constant so it remains outside okay. <coughs> then what happens that is e now we know what is z z is this factor so replace z by its actual form s 1 x plus s 2 y whole to the power n now s 1 x plus s 2 y whole to the power n is actually a binomial series Okay, of n plus 1 terms. Again that can be, so I can expand this term into its binomial series. So, I get another summation, but unlike the outer summation that will be a finite summation now, because there are total terms equal to n plus 1. And again expectation can be brought inside that summation and can be applied on each term in present in that binomial expansion. Right? If I do that, <coughs> what we get is this there will be k. So, k should be from 0 to n total number of term is n plus 1. Okay. We know that binomial series n k here factorial n divided by factorial k into factorial n minus k. Okay. Expectation operator does not work on it because this is not random. Then there will be this product s 1 x whole to the power say k s 2 s 2 y whole to the power n minus k out of which s 1 and s 2 can be separated out. Okay. So, we get e working on x to the power k y to the power n minus k and again 
s 1 to the power k s 2 to the power n minus k. You see this moment is coming here <coughs> x to the power k y to the power n minus k it is expected values. Summation of the two powers is equal to n. Okay. So, it is a it is a moment of nth order right. Also note one thing there is a summation over n, n 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2 up to n equal to infinity. Now, for each n for a particular n you have got this summation where total terms total number of term is n plus 1 first and then remember for that given n I mean powers of x and powers of y in this summation they should be such that the added total of the I mean, summation of those two powers is always equal to n. So, if n is 4 you can have 0 here, 4 here, 1 here, 3 here, 2 here, 2 here, 3 here, 1 here and 4 here, 0 here right. You cannot have anything else. So, this is one thing you please remember because subsequent derivations will need this property. So, for a particular n as chosen from outside okay, we will have only those powers of k and n minus k, those powers of x and those powers of y. So, that summation of those two powers is always equal to n. Okay. So, this is what we get as the moment generating function for uh, <coughs> uh, x and y. Okay. Now, if I erase this, <coughs> as I told you this any order moments are present. So, maybe if I expand it little bit you will see the various moments are coming up. For instance, you start with n equal to 0 first. So, 1 by factorial n is 1, n equal to 0 means only one term in this summation that is k equal to 0. Okay. So, that will give rise to what? Basically that will give rise to 1, s 1 x to the power 0, y to the power 0 okay. and then s 1 to the power 0, s 2 to the power 0 and this 1 here. So, that 1 and 1 by factorial 0 that is 1. So, first term for n equal to 0 is 1 then take n equal to 1. n equal to 1 means in this inner summation I have got two terms one is for k equal to 0 another is for k equal to 1. So, for k equal to 0 first you have got these terms s 1 to the power 0 that is 1, but s 2 to the power 1. So, s 2 similarly here e of y x to the power 0 is 1. So, e of y okay. and uh, 1 comma 0, 1 0 that will give us 1 only. Okay. <coughs> so, you will get one term as E y is 2 and E y is similarly now put k equal to 1. So, x to the power 1, but y to the power 0. So, E of x only similarly s 1 to the power 1, but s 2 to the power 0. So, only s 1 and again here you get 1 okay. and outside also 1 of course. So, this time you get now take n equal to 2. For n equal to 2 here you have in this summation you have got three terms k equal to 0 first or maybe you start with k equal to 2 then 1 then 0. If k equal to 2, 2 here and 2 here means actually it will give rise to 1 and x square y to the power 0. So, E x square similarly s 1 square but s 2 to the power 0. So, this will give rise to <coughs> and of course, 1 by factorial 2 that is 1 by 2. So, that will give rise to what? 1 by 2 maybe we can put in a bracket E of x square that is m 2 0 s 1 square then k equal to 1, k equal to 1 means 2 here 1 here. So, factorial 2 divided by factorial factorial 1 into factorial 1. So, that is give, give rise to 2 so, we will have a term 2, okay. then E of x to the power 1, y to the power 1. So, E x y which is m 1 1 and again s 1 to the power 1, s 2 to the power 1. Then k equal to 0 will give us to what? 2 0 here will give us to again 1 factorial 2 divided by factorial 2 into factorial 0 that is 1 and e of y square s 2 to the power 2 right. So, that will give rise to m 0 2 s 2 square plus so on and so forth. So, you see all the moments are present here right. 
Okay. <coughs> Suppose given this moment generating function, we want to find out m k r that is if k plus r is equal to say some n, then this nth order moment m k r, how do we go about it? <coughs> so, for that I rewrite that term again the phi prime x 1 x 2 Okay. Now, you see one thing, <coughs> if I differentiate this guy, if k plus r is equal to some n and if I differentiate this n times out of which with respect to s 1 k times and S 2 sorry or times and then after differentiation put S 1 equal to 0, S 2 equal to 0. What do you get? <coughs> now, let us see how to proceed. First, since k plus r equal to n, consider in this summation n equal to, I mean, so if you are confused, I mean, if you want rather, if you want, I can make it m. So, if it is m, in this case, first consider n equal to m, after all, n is 0, n is 1, n is 2, dot 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 of infinity, so it can be m also. So, take the case n equal to m. So, when n is m from outside, here I have got a binomial series where k starts from 0 goes up to m, total number of terms is m. Here <coughs> this summation of the two powers, power of x, power of y that is always equal to m then m, okay, that is always equal to m because I am talking from outside, I am taking the particular case where n equal to m. So, n equal to m here and I have got a binomial series. Okay. So, e of x to the power k, y, y to the power m minus k. Okay. Now, similarly s 1 to the power k, s 2 to the power m minus k. Now, suppose I first differentiate it with respect to s 2, how many times? R times, R means m minus k times. So, if you differentiate this factor m minus k times, what happens? you do not get any power of S 2. Each differentiation leads to reduction of power by 1. First time we differentiate, power becomes m minus k minus 1, next time m minus k minus 2, so on and so forth. So, if you differentiate it m minus k times, then you finally get S 2 to the power 0 that is 1, but a factorial of m minus k comes. So, that will give rise to m minus k factorial. Okay, everything else remains same in that particular term. Okay. And now, if you differentiate this with respect to s 1 k times, again you get s 1 to the power 0 in the end that is 1, but a factorial k comes. <coughs> All right. There are other terms also in this series first, you are differentiating them, but remember in this series either <coughs> I mean you have got this situation where this is k and this is uh, m minus k. If you take some other term, maybe the power here is higher, but power here is less. So, if you differentiate this s 2 to the power m minus, <coughs> suppose you consider for example, other term s 1 to the power k plus 1, s 2 to the power m minus k minus 1. 
if you consider that term and again differentiate it with respect to s2 m minus k times obviously you get 0 here because power is less power then <coughs> because now we have got s1 to the power k plus 1, but s2 to the power m minus k minus 1 where, whereas you are differentiating it m minus k times. So, obviously this will give rise to 0. So, product will be 0. On the other hand, if you take the term s1 to the power k minus 1 and here s2 to the power m minus k plus 1. So, this power here is higher by 1 for s1 power is less by 1, s1, that is power is k minus 1. And now differentiate it with, with respect to s1 k times again this factor will become 0 because power is k minus 1, but you are differentiating k times. So, you understand that other terms after differentiation become 0. You even do not have to put s1 equal to 0, s2 equal to 0. Then further I took n equal to m, if it is n equal to m minus 1 or m minus 2 or m minus 3 and likewise, there even it is obvious that powers are less and differentiation with give rise to 0. Okay. I will consider the case where n equal to either m plus 1, m plus 2, m plus 3 that is when n takes higher values. <coughs> there you will see, there you will get such some such terms like this, maybe consider the case where n equal to m plus 1. So, this becomes m plus 1 minus k and this is s 1 to the power k. So, I agree, I mean here if you differentiate this product with respect to s 1 k times and s 2 m minus k times as here, this will not, this product will not become 0. Okay. There will be some term either s 1 or s 2 or maybe some power of that, okay. but then we substitute s 1 equal to 0, s 2 equal to 0 that will take care of the, that will eliminate them. right? So, you understand that even if I take n equal to m plus 1 or m plus 2 or m plus 3 higher terms and consider the binomial series do this differentiation. Upon differentiation if I substitute s 1 equal to 0, s 2 equal to 0 all terms are in. Only when I am considering this n equal to m and the corresponding binomial series here and then differentiating every term with respect to s 2 odd times and s 1 k times where k plus r equal to m. Okay. So, then <coughs> that is s 2 to the power m minus k which is r. So, s 2 to the power r s 1 to the power k this is differentiated s 2 to the power k differentiated sorry s 2 to the power r differentiated r times s 1 to the power k differentiated k times. So, both give rise to just 1 and 1 and factorial k factorial m minus k, but no s 1 no s 2. So, it does not matter whether put s 1 equal to 0 or s 2 equal to 0. So, only that term remains <coughs> and these two factorials have come up factorial k factorial m minus k. Now, consider n k here, after what is this factorial n that will be cancelled with factorial n here from outside and in the denominator you have got factorial k which will cancel with this factorial k, another term is factorial n minus k which will cancel with, well I am considering n equal to m, that is let me make the correction. So, it is m minus m k here, okay. so factorial m and n equal to m is considered, so factorial m here, so factorial m, factorial m cancels in the denominator here we have got factorial m minus k and factorial k they cancel with this factorial k factorial m minus k. So, what I am left with is basically this term e of x to the power k y to the power r where k plus r equal to m. Okay. So, this will give rise to sorry. that is m k r where k plus r equal to some m. This m stands for moment, it is not the m that I was talking of earlier. So, this is this shows that given this function phi s 1 comma s 2, if you are interested in finding out a moment m k r, then you differentiate this with respect to s 2 r times and with respect to s 1 k times, then upon differentiation whatever you get substitute s 1 equal to 0 there and s 2 equal to 0 there. Okay. So, you have proved this result. Now, let us see and let us consider an example. <coughs> so, 
suppose it is given that x and y they are jointly zero mean okay you have to find out if I could, the question is show that e x square y square which is nothing but m to 2 is nothing but e x square e y square plus twice e x y whole square ok or you can also say you could finally, sigma x square after all mean of x is 0. So, e of x square means e of x minus 0 whole square that is variance of x sigma x square sigma y square here and obviously, this is the covariance c because what is covariance expected value of x minus mu x times y minus mu y, but both the means are 0. So, it turns out to be expected value of just x y we can call it c. So, this is twice c square we have to prove this. Now, one thing is this that since it is m 2 2 what you can do you can simply apply the previous formula that is first find out phi prime the function phi prime as a function of s 1 and s 2 ok and then 2 2. So, k equal to 2 or equal to 2. So, k plus r that is 4 right. So, differentiate uh, that function with respect to s 1 2 times s 2 2 times whatever you get now put s 1 equal to 0 in that expression s 2 equal to 0 in that expression right that will give you this, but that will be little cumbersome. So, we follow just I mean little more an approach which is slightly more different slightly more direct ok let us see what it is. <coughs> As you know, we have already seen that phi prime this you have already seen right and I am interested in finding out e x square y square that means, k should be 2 ok and n minus k should be 2 that is n minus 2 should be 2. So, n should be equal to 4. So, in this summation from the outer summation I pick up the particular case where n equal to 4 ok where n equal to 4 and the corresponding term any and for n equal to 4 we consider this binomial series there for one term I get e of x square y square for what k k equal to 2. So, first n equal to 4 I fix. So, k equal to 0 to 4 I have got a binomial series of 5 terms out of those 5 terms I consider k equal to 2 case if k equal to 2 then only you have got x square y square ok and therefore, we have got it s, s 1 square s 2 square ok. So, so you can say remember this s 1 square s 2 square this combination I mean this <coughs> comes up only in this case where n equal to 4 and then k equal to 2. If n equal to 5 you, you would not have if suppose n equal to 5 you got another binomial series from k equal to 5, but there, was, uh, there are 6 terms, but in no term you will have a situation like s 1 to the power 2 s 2 to the power 2 simply because the total the sum of the 2 powers must be then equal to what since n equal to 5 the total it should be 5 but when it is s 1 square s 2 square then that means total power should be equal to 4 right n should be equal to 4. 
So, this combination occurs only this combination h 1 square h 2 square this occurs only when n equal to 4 first that is 2 plus 2 is 4 and there you take k equal to 2. So, 1 is 2 other 1 is 2. Okay. So, I can say that in this infinite series I have to find out the term find out the coefficient associated with this term h 1 square h 2 square what is the coefficient? The first we have said n should be 4. So, that will be 4 k equal to 2 okay. and from outside 1 by factorial 4 and then e x square y square <coughs> right. So, I erase this. I rewrite it here. So, s 1 square s 2 square gives rise to this term remember our interest is Our interest rate is in this thing, in this expected value, that is E of x square y square. We are interested in this. Okay. On the other hand, so far I have not used the fact that they are zero mean Gaussian jointly Gaussian, which means zero. Okay, <coughs> I have only taken the general expression for phi prime h one h two. Okay, the general expression whether x y are jointly <coughs> Gaussian or not, whether they have 0 mean or not. I mean this is always true that in that moment generating function that particular term that has s 1 square is 2 square okay, that will have this coefficient. So, I have just written down the coefficient, okay. but now I come to this business that uh, x and y are jointly Gaussian and mean 0. Now, we know we have already seen earlier that in such case what is phi s 1 s 2 phi prime. In fact, we have found out the characteristic function in such case okay. and phi prime s 1 s 2 is quite close to that j omega 1 and j omega 2 are to be written by s 1 s 2 okay. that will give rise to this. In fact, you remember in case you have forgotten just remember <coughs> well I think I have to rewrite it here because that page has uh, gone from here. So, just bear with me there is some problem here. So, I just have to write down once again s 1 square s 2 square that was giving rise to this coefficient. Okay. And now, we are considering this fact that x and y are jointly Gaussian with mean 0. Now, earlier we have seen the characteristic function, joint characteristic function for such random variables. What was that? Phi omega 1 omega 2, we have seen it earlier that this is equal to e to the power j mu x omega 1 plus mu y omega 2 okay, times again e to the power minus half and no j here omega 1 square sigma 1 square twice r sigma 1 sigma 2 omega 1 omega 2 plus omega 2 square sigma 2 square. So, you can write down what is phi prime s 1 s 2. Simply 
if you remember this moment generating function, the formula for moment generating function is nothing but <coughs> characteristic function where g omega 1 was to be replaced by s 1, g omega 2 to be s 2. Okay. <coughs> so, what does it give rise to? This g and in any case mu x and mu y are given to be 0 here. So, it will be power 0, this term goes, so is 1 and here we get e to the power <coughs> so, j omega 1 is s 1, so s 1 square is minus omega 1 square, so minus omega 1 square, okay. s 1 square is minus omega 1 square. Just a minute. So, I directly write down, in fact, as the book says, this is to the power minus a, where a is. Remember twice r sigma 1 sigma 2 is nothing but this r into sigma 1 sigma 2 is nothing but the covariance because r is correlation coefficient. So, you can say this is covariance c. So, you can say twice c s 1 s 2 plus plus what s 2 square there is sigma 2 square s 2 square. Okay. Now, what we do is very simple this e to the power minus a there is an exponential series right. So, it will be having terms like 1 plus a plus a square by factorial 2 plus a cube by factorial 3 plus dot 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 dot. In this series I will find out where we get this term like s 1 square s 2 square, take out the coefficient, equate that with this coefficient, that will give us the result. Okay. <coughs> so, let me erase this. You see one thing, first term is 1, forget that, because that has nothing to do with s 1 square s 2 square. Second term is a a means this term, but it has either s 1 square or s 2 square, but s 1 s 2, no s 1 square s 2 square together. So, forget that term 2. Then s square by 2, now in s square by 2, we have the square of this, in the square of this, square of this term comes. So, there is one case where you have got s 1 square s 2 square and a product of these two, that also has s 1 square s 2 square. So, in s square by 2 I get this s 1 square s 2 square term. Okay. How about a to the power 3? Okay. In a to the power 3 of course, you would not get it because, okay. because uh, obviously you see <coughs> either this is raised to the power 3, each is raised to the power 3 okay. or square of this times this or square of times this times this. So, you would not get, you can easily see you would not get s 1 square s 2 square. Okay. So, only s square by 2 is where uh, you get this term s 1 square s 2 square. What is s square by 2? You remember how I am getting s square by 2? That is I expanded into the power minus a okay, into its power series. Hmm? In fact, it should be to the power plus a, you remember, because uh, in the characteristic function we had terms like minus omega 1 square, minus omega 2 square and if s is j omega 1, then s square is minus omega 1 square, s s 2 s 2 is minus j omega, minus omega 2 square and s 1 s 2 is <coughs> minus omega 1 omega 2, right. So, it should be actually plus. Okay. Now, s square by 2 comes as the third term of the exponential series. 
first is 1, forget it, it has no such term, S1 square is 2 square. Second is S A, again that has got no term like S1 square is 2 square, forget it. Only the second term, the third term, which is S square by 2, that will have expressions like S1 square is 2 square. Okay. <coughs> I mean, S square by 2 means 1 by 8, 1 by 2 and whole square of this 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 2, 1 by 8 times this whole square, right. In this expression now, just find out when on what occasions you get s1 square, s2 square. First whole square of this that will give rise to s1 to the power 4, forget it. Whole square of this that will give rise to s2 to the power 4, forget it. But whole square of this that will give rise to 4 c square, s1 square, s2 square. So, I take it. Okay. 4 c square, s1 square, s2 square. So, this time I am getting 4 c square by 8, 1 by 8 is common. So, one term is 4 c square and there will be a term like twice this and this that will give rise to s 1 square s 2 square, but twice sigma 1 square sigma 2 square. Okay. So, twice sigma 1 square sigma 2 square. So, this is what I will have with s 1 square s 2 square in this term s square by 2. In s square by 2, there will be several terms, but s 1 square s 2 square will have this coefficient. So, these two are to be equated, these two are to be equated, okay. this one and this one. <coughs> if you equate this, you directly get the result. After all, you get factorial 4 here that cancels with factorial 4. In the denominator, you have got factorial 2, factorial 2, which is basically 4. So, 1 by 4 and here 1 by 8. So, that cancels, you get only 1 by 2, which means e x square y square is 1 by 2, 4 c square plus twice sigma 1 square, sigma 1 or rather sigma x, sigma y sigma x square, sigma y square, you can write sigma x square, sigma y square plus twice c square. This is what we wanted to prove, right. So, we have proved it. So, that is all about this moment generating function. Another thing we want to do that is joint Okay. That is either z is a function of x y, that is a function of single function of two random variables or you have got maybe two functions z and w, two defined functions of two random variables. In both case, you can say that if z some capital z subject to that event m is same as probability of z taking value capital z less than equal to capital z along with m. So, this joint event both m taking place and this event taking place that is z taking value less than equal to capital z divided by probability of the event m. So, this is the case for a single function of two random variables and you have got when you have got two such functions z and w. capital Z capital W by M by the same token will be this joint density. Okay. 
<coughs> okay. Let us take some example. Suppose z is y, that is a function of x and y, but z is suppose y and that event m is nothing but x taking values less than equal to some capital X. So, that means we have to find out T y sorry here yeah, I mean we will find out this conditional thing. Okay. This is nothing but probability of this joint probability is y taking values less than equal to capital Y, x taking values less than equal to capital X divided by the probability of x. The probability this is the joint density we know, this is the joint distribution f x y you can say x y and this is f x x. So, how about the <coughs> density that is more important density is not <coughs> simply derivative of this with respect to y. Okay. <coughs> so, that means subject to this is nothing but Okay. We modify this example, make it slightly more general now. Now, two functions z is y, w is x, and m is this thing x less than equal to some x2, x1. Okay. So, here what is subject to this m this is nothing but probability this joint probability of x Sorry. Okay. Now you see one thing. <coughs> Suppose you choose X. Hmm. We have got two limits. So, we have two limits, one is x2, another is x1. Now, if this capital X is such that it is less than x1, this x1 limit. So, the two things are jointly occurring, x has to be less than equal to some given capital X, 
at the same time x should be greater than x 1 less than equal to some x 2. Now, if this capital X is less than <coughs> or equal to x 1, then two things cannot be together, cannot take place together right. That x is simultaneously above capital X 1 and less than equal to x 1 that is not possible. So, if x is less than equal to x 1 this is 0. Similarly, if x is greater than x 2 then what happens if x is greater than x 2 then x is less than equal to x 2 I mean <coughs> x is less than equal to capital X and x is less than equal to capital X 2 out of these two I will consider this condition because capital X 2 is less than x. So, in that case it is simply because joint probability of y falling less than equal to capital Y and x lying within this range that will be nothing but uh, what the distribution x to y and divided by this is of course, f x x 2 minus f x x 1. Okay. Now, I am nearly through just one more expression and that will be over for today and <coughs> the other case The other case is if x is lying within this range, if x is then obviously, I will take small x to be greater than x 1, but less than equal to capital X. Okay. On the lower side limit is x 1, but the upper side it will go up to capital X as coming from here. In that case, it will be similar to the previous one now to find out density you will see one thing that uh, in one case we have got 0. So, density will be 0 because derivative after all in the other case also if you find out that <coughs> this is a constant thing okay. after all joint density means what I mean you have to take partial derivative del square f del x del y there is no x here this constant. So, derivative will be 0 only here there is x okay, only here there is x. So, only here you will get this uh, density okay. and what will the density be? This is independent of <coughs> x and here del square f del x del y will give rise to p of x y. So, here p of x y divided by whatever we have here this constant in other two cases it will be 0. Okay. So, I stop here today that is all for today and uh, in the next class we start from here. Thank you very much. Okay, so today we discuss uh, an important topic that is uh, in fact we start this topic sequences of random variables. You see we started with uh, first uh, a single random variable right and we considered a function of a single random variable. Then we generalize it to I mean two random variables. Okay. So, it, it, you can even say that it is a sequence just of two, two, I mean two elements, two random variables, two element sequence and we consider a function of two random variables, then two functions of two random variables and all that. Right? That whole treatment will now be generalized where we will be considering a vector say x 
as x1 dot 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 xn. This x will be called a random vector if each element x1 to xn is a random variable. That is x will be called a random vector or say sequence if each x i is a random variable. Okay. <coughs> so, the, you see earlier we considered two random variables. So, we had a vector of two elements x 1 and x 2. We called it x y. This is a defined notation. But now it is more general n such random variables. right? So, from a hindsight you can see that if you talk of the joint density or joint probability distribution of x, it will be basically a function of n variables right x 1 to x n. Okay. So, we can define joint probability distribution Actually, I should write like f x for x say so takes values x 1 the specific values x 2 dot 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 x n okay. and this capital X actually is a vector constituting of the variable small x 1 dot 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 small x n. Here capital x 1 is a particular value for small x 1 x 1 is the variable capital x 2 is a particular value for the variable small x 2 and likewise. What does this mean? <coughs> it means the probability, probability of this event that x1 is less than equal to capital X1, x2 less than equal to capital X2 dot 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 xn less than equal to capital xn. This should occur jointly. There are n joint, n joint events. There is one is small x1 less than equal to capital X1, and there is small x2 less than equal to capital X2, so on and so forth. Okay. This should occur jointly, simultaneously. That is what is called joint distribution, right? Okay. This is denoted by fx x1 up to xn. Sometimes when I do not need, I may not, I may skip this subscript x and directly put x1 to xn. I think you can easily understand, okay. Sometimes. But when there is confusion, when suppose I am dealing with two or more than two such distribution functions, then to differentiate between the functions, I may put the subscript. Okay. Now, this is for the joint probability distribution. By the same token, you can then define and you can easily see that this is now a function of n variables, okay, x1 to xn. By the same way, I can next define the joint probability density function. Joint probability density. This simply you know that we have to differentiate, we have to differentiate the joint probability distribution function. So, we, def we define like this p x x 1 up to x n is nothing but del n n times. Okay. I am skipping the subscript here x 1 dot 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 x n with respect to del x 1 del x 2 dot 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 del x n. This is the joint probability density. What does it mean actually? It means that if you could now consider an n dimensional space whose x's are x 1 x 2 up to x n. And there, if you take an infinitesimally volume, I mean mass, okay, uh, infinitesimal zone, region, okay, whose uh, volume is say dx1, dx2 up to dxn, that is along x x x1 axis, that is suppose in an n-dimensional space, you are located at a point, 
up to x n at this point you are considering an infinite infinitely small or infinite small small I mean uh, region or cell okay whose sides are we, got, we call it actually hypercube we actually in real life cube means it has got only three sides okay but in an n-dimensional space I will call it n-dimensional hypercube whose sides are dx1 dx2 up to dxn so volume is this so basically it defines an area where x goes x the variable x1 goes from capital x1 to capital x1 plus dx1 okay capital x2 goes for that is this zone this for variable x1 then for variable x2 again this is the range dot 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 okay <coughs> you can easily see will be nothing but p x at this choice x 1 up to x n divided by the determinant that is 1 and we are given the fact that the random variables x 1 up to x n they are independent. Okay. So, this joint density is nothing but the product of the individual density. So, p x 1 okay and capital x1 is y1 p x2 which is y2 minus y1 dot 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 p x n y n minus y n minus 1 okay So, you can easily see that the concepts involved here they are nothing new, they are simple generalizations of the concepts that were valid or that are introduced rather in the case of two random variables. Okay. That is why I am not giving any proof and all that you can argue about this on your own. So, I stop here today in the next class I consider this uh, uh, issue further and go into things like you know mean, covariance, correlation. In fact, we will have a correlation matrix now, covariance matrix and things. Okay. Again, the characteristic function issue as relevant here and that takes us to a very important theorem called central limit theorem. Okay. So, that is all for today. Thank you very much.